Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the latest Be Quiet AIO, the Light Loop. Now I've got the 360 model, millimetre model, I've also got the uh, white model but they do come in 240s and you can get them in black as well. Now the white 360 is going to come in around the $239 mark, similar kind of prices when it comes to uh, euros but haven't been given an official price in GBP yet. So I'm going to say, let's just say £239 until things get officially released. You can click the link underneath if you want to go and have a look on the website, uh, dissect the graphs, there's loads more information over there if you want to go and take a look. Uh, but what do you get with your 360 millimeter AIO? Well, you do get three uh, light loop fans. Now, the Be Quiet fans are some of the best on the market. I personally rate them incredibly highly. Now, they still have a separate cable for the PWM and the ARGB. They haven't gone down any of the simplified kind of um, you know when you have to have a specific cable for your fan and it has to go into a spit, they've kept it relatively simple which is good because it means there's a lot more versatility with motherboards and stuff. What they have done though is they've brought out a little, I say control module but it's effectively a splitter and effectively you can connect your fans and your ARGB into this to simplify things around the back does still mean a fair amount of cables though so that is something that you need to consider. The fans that come with it spin up to 1900 rpm when we have been testing um, but what I do want to say with, with the testing is we have done an awful lot of it with this because it is quite special in that you can offset the cooler specifically for the newer AMD CPUs because with the new AMD CPU the hottest part of the CPU the CCX is are technically down the bottom of the CPU itself. So when your motherboard is upright, the uh, CCXs are down the bottom. I was going to go and grab one there, but it's not there now. Um, uh, uh, down the bottom. So effectively, what uh, Be Quiet found was the, the way that their cold plate has been designed uh, meant that it was very centrally focused for a monolithic CPU, for want of a better term. So it was not favoring very well with the newer AMD stuff. Now with some of the um, uh, air coolers available on the market with heat pipes that run up and down, because of those heat pipes, it kind of favors where the hotspot is because the heat can travel throughout the pipes. But when you're talking about a cold plate with a fin stack in the middle with water running through it, they, they were slightly off center uh, to where really the hot part needed to be. So what they've done is they've allowed uh, within the bracket you to be able to move the whole cooler or the, not the cooler itself, but the pump and the actual CPU part of it down by eight millimeters for you to be able to tailor it to the newer AMD uh, CPUs. Now this covers all of the 7,000 series and all of the 9,000 series as well. Now, because of this, what I've done is I've tested it in both zero and eight. So zero is square in the middle. Eight is with an eight millimeter downwards offset. And I've done that with the 9950X, the 9900X, and the 9700X as well, just so that we can see the performance there. But then I've also tested it on our normal static Intel CPU test rig, not CPU test rig, CPU cooler test rig. So we've got lots of comparisons available there as well. Now, when I did test the 9000 series processors, I actually used the Silent Loop AIO from Be Quiet, and I used it in this case. But because I knew I was going to be testing CPUs and I'd want to be able to push boundaries a little bit, these are the Pro fans, so these spin up to 3000 RPM. So when you see the comparisons between the light loop at 1900, uh, these were running full flat out. These are ear splittingly fast, loop move lots of air. So we took basically for the CPU review, we took an older AIO, strapped some massive fans on it to be able to give us a bit of more headroom. So with this, it's going to kind of open your eyes to the difference that the offset cold plate makes, the new pump design, the, uh, the actual cold plate work that they've done themselves. And they are very, very similar fans, 
but they only spin at 1900 RPM and not 3000. So that's a lot for you to digest. Now the pump itself, lovely aesthetic. That frosted plastic is uh, beautiful. Now the little thing in the middle where you can see it says be quiet, you do actually get replacement stickers for that in the box. I'm gonna make a statement, be quiet, and I kind of wish that you'd sent a few different colors rather than just two replacement white ones. I think it would have been nice if there was a black in there, maybe a silver for argument's sake, and maybe even quite crazily because of who I am, I'd have to say red as well. But it would have just been nice rather than just the white ones. You do get the mounts for the uh, AMD, which is the with the offset. We do get obviously all the mounts for your Intel sockets as well because we've used both because it's we've you know anyway the uh, the radiators you've got the lovely uh, fins down the side of it rather than just a plain side uh, and it is all very optically pleasing optically pleasing great but what about the performance performance wise right at the top this is the 9950X as tested. Um, and that was with the 1900 RPMs. Now the 9950X is obviously the flagship uh, and it does get incredibly hot. So you can see at the top, our maximum temperature was 89.8. But then when you step down, you do the offset, same results, sorry, not same results, but the same setup, you can see it took over three degrees off, just, well, it was three and a half degrees pretty much, just by, with that, uh, eight millimeter offset. So you can instantaneously see it's made a huge difference. Throughout the rest of the CPU testing, we just did everything with the eight millimeter offset. And the reason for that is, if I'm completely honest, if you've got a 7,000 series or a 9,000 series processor with a three and a half degrees difference, I don't see the point in mounting it square in the middle. So I'm telling you now, if you buy one of these and you have a 7,000 or a 9,000 series, just do the eight millimeter offset. It is completely worth it. And I just don't understand why you wouldn't, which is why the results today are pretty much just that eight mil offset. But you do need to remember, these are 3000 RPM fans. So technically, if you've got 86 in a bit for this at maxi jack, <coughs> with the 3000 RPM fans still running at maximum RPM, there is uh, a two degrees drop. So this config, is technically a bit cooler on the uh, 9950X. But when you step down, you can start to pick about uh, the differences with the other CPU. So amazingly, it was quite close with the 9950. But when you step down to the 9900X, the light loop was cooler and it was it, much, much cooler than the uh, on the 97. We did retest the 9950X several times, but we actually think because of the so much heat being generated from the processor, it was literally a case of not being able to uh, clear out quick enough. But we do need to remember 1900 RPM fans versus 3000 RPM fans, and there was a couple of degrees difference. So there's, you have to kind of uh, take your wins and your losses. Uh, on the other processes, obviously it was night and day difference, like the, the fan RPM that you could run the 9700X at, in reality, you could knock that down to 1000 RPM and it would still be below 80 degrees uh, running uh, OCCT. Now, when we move on to the Intel rig, there's a lot of uh, data to digest because we've got 1000 RPM fans, we've got 1900 RPM fans, and then we've also got some gaming results as well. The gaming results, because let's face facts, we don't all just run Cinebench 24 consistently. Cinebench 24 results are handy because it is the absolute bleeding edge of CPU torture that we can possibly do. But what you are going to want to know is the results that you can get when you're gaming. So if I'm honest, the results that I would really want to show you are Cinebench with Max, because that's obviously the one to, you know, it's stressing everything out. And we can still see here that uh, you, this processor is still um, <coughs> just 74 degrees. But when we go down to the gaming results, let's just look at the 1000 because 1000 RPM fans, nice and quiet, 
you're still gaming, we used the latest Final Fantasy uh, benchmark just to be able to give us a, an idea and we let it run right the way through. It's quite lengthy as well and it's very stressful but it's also very consistent. You can see there that it barely touches the CPU um, but if you want to go to the top of the graph for an air cooler you can see that would have been like 50 odd uh, degrees. So, lots of uh, information for you to be able to look at and digest there. If you're wondering about the CPU itself, it was a 14 i5 14600K with manual uh, volts specified at 1.27 volts. Uh, none of this Intel wandering, breaking stuff. We have to be very specific. Uh, we also have to be very specific because uh, we don't want things necessarily throttling, but also we want things to stay consistent. Um, so that is the way we set it up. So long story short, for the most part, if you're going to buy this for a, uh, any of the AMDs, it's going to serve you uh, proud. If you're going to be using it for gaming, in complete honesty, you're not going to have to run it or stress it that hard. Video editing and stuff, just offset your fan profile so it kicks up later on in the, uh, like the temperature range and then just let it do its job. It is an incredibly quiet, um, uh, AIO and a lot of that is pretty much because of the high quality of those fans and I really do like it. The only real negative that I can honestly say about it in reality is the hub that goes around the back I think, like with all the cables because there's three fans and then you've got the pump and stuff I do feel like we do need to get to a point where those fans could technically have like been daisy chained or something around the back so something like that would have made me feel a little bit better so that then the fans have only got one out uh, for the uh, fan header and then one out for the ARGB. That would have made keeping it tidy that little bit better. But if you're not afraid of getting busy around the back of your motherboard tray, tidying things up, clipping things away, then you're absolutely not going to mind what I'm saying anyway. So for the... Um, Light loop in white, I'm going to give it the OC3D Performance Award. But, and I thought I was going to give it a Performance Award, but then I, right at the last minute, in my head, literally just then, I'm going to go with Innovation instead. Because moving that socket downwards is a masterstroke. Three and a half degrees is definitely not something that we should be uh, uh, snitting, like raising or whatever our nose at. I really like the fact that they've gone that way and it, the performance itself in the graphs with those fans, it spoke volumes. Um, right, many lots for you to uh, have to pick apart, but a thoroughly deserved innovation award on the Be Quiet Light Loop 360mm AIO. Make sure you go and have a look at the results on the website, like, subscribe, comment, and do all of those things. Uh, that help with the socials and the reach and all of that sort of stuff. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Tiny Tom Logan with another rather thorough video for you. Out.